Hello and welcome to the very first episode of ESM Squared, the brand new podcast designed for experienced social media marketers. Today I'm joined by Jessica Horn, daughter of extreme adventurer Mike Horn and co-director of Horn Media, the agency managing his online and offline presence. Lots of very inspiring stuff on Mike Horn's social media channels, so marketers don't hesitate to go check them out. Just a heads up, Jessica and I are not together physically in the same room. We're recording this at a distance because of COVID and also because it's obviously kinder to the environment. Hi, Jessica. Thanks so much for being here with me today. How are you? I am great. Thanks for having me. Where are you speaking to us from? From Switzerland, from our offices in Lausanne. It's by Lake Geneva. You and your sister Annika are in charge of the communication around the exploits of your father, the famous adventurer Mike Horn. He has crossed the Amazon alone, he has reached the North Pole during the winter on foot, and more recently he has crossed the Antarctic. He is unstoppable. You and your sister created the agency Horn Media to manage his presence on social media, and the Mike Horn community is composed of nearly 420,000 followers on Facebook and more than half a million on Instagram and not to mention close to 300,000 subscribers on your YouTube channel which is impressive to say the least. Can we start off with some general questions if that's all right with you? Let's start off with the message that you want to get across through Mike Horn's social media presence. So I think it's The main message that we're trying to spread across our social media is really to encourage people to go out and to step out of their comfort zone, to go into the unknown. And that's when you're in the unknown that you realize what you're really capable of. So kind of push your limits, go and explore the world, the beautiful world we live in, and really to be able to share that with the rest of the world is um, you know what we what we try to focus on so it's a lot about physical effort but also just observing and appreciating the beauty of the planet people tend to to be too paralyzed by fear and underestimate what they're really capable of and once you're once you see that you can actually go just that little step further or just that you know that extra mile that's when you when you feel proud of yourself and you've got that satisfaction and yeah that's really a state of mind that is important for us to keep on pushing forward. It's such a powerful message it's so inspiring it's great no wonder you have so many followers. (laughs) My my father is a very inspirational person and he he has the words to motivate anybody so even though what he does is quite out of anything that is normal to humans or seems kind of surreal um, he manages to make a good parallel between what he does and everything like in everyday life so he will probably climb 8,000 meter peaks but people in their ordinary lives have their own mountains to climb so once you manage to take his uh, state of mind or philosophy and apply it to your life then you can see that you know no mountain is too high or that you really just got to go that extra mile to get to the summit so yeah it, it's it's very metaphorical so what are your goals on social media apart from obviously getting this message across what is it that you're uh, that you're trying to to achieve through the the social media presence? I think it's really to show the beauty of the planet, so that once you see how beautiful the world is, you will make sure that you do everything in your power to protect it. So there's an environmental message that is important for us too in everything that we do. And by showing the most remote places of the world, by going to the Arctic and showing the polar bears and the whales and and for people to really be able to see that uh, through our content and to see that it really exists. Because when we say out of sight, out of mind, I think that that's the main problem of why society isn't doing all it could to protect the environment. But to really put it in front of their eyes and be like, you know, 
this look at these polar bears or look at this whale and we've really got to do everything to protect our polar regions and to pre protect our oceans and keep them clean and change our our plastic consumption or you know it's just those just trying to change attitudes or behaviors through beautiful visuals and obviously you have really strong values like environmental values and humanitarian and for nature etc so those are all of the values that I guess you're trying to push through with your content with the images and videos that you share yes exactly because um, throughout his more than 25 years of professional exploration he's really seen the world change before his eyes and he really wants to play the role of a witness he will be he's not an activist in a sense he just wants to be like this is what i saw this is what i experienced and my playground as a professional explorer is completely changing so just kind of have his message across like this is this is it i'm not telling you to be a tree hugger or to you know be an activist or so on you're free to make your own opinion and to m decide what behavior you're going to take but this is just my experience there you have it and then and then it's up to you to make that difference could you tell us a little bit about who Mike's online community is, like who follows him? Initially, it was a very niche audience of people who love the outdoors, going on adventures and being in nature. Um, after he started uh, TV shows uh, in France, he got a more wider, a wider audience, so a more general audience where a lot of different people, men and women, about 50-50, started following him he's got younger a younger audience and a much older old audience which is not necessarily on social media but we managed to to communicate to them through tv and uh, but i would say in general on social media it's about the 24 to 35 age range okay it's interesting that it kind of goes across all ages like that that he really manages to touch all different types of of people with different backgrounds, different age groups? I guess because we try to communicate through different kind of channels. So of course, social media um, is more targeted towards the millennials, but then again, with the younger generation, they're a lot on YouTube, so that's why we decided to focus our energy on YouTube, because they're the leaders of tomorrow. And if we can communicate our message to them and that they're, they're listening to us, then those leaders, well, those future leaders will be making this decisions later on in life. So that's where we can really have a change and maybe have an impact because they will be, they will be exposed to the beauty of the planet through our content. And that's, that's really what we're trying to focus on at the moment. Can you tell me about the other members of the team and also including yourself, what you actually do, what your roles are in terms of social media and getting the content out there? Sure. So um, my sister, she's in charge of the content production. So she will make sure that whenever we go on an adventure, we'll have a cameraman and a photographer that's there to communicate and um, take photos, uh, which we will later share on social media. So we have another person in charge of posting. So once we're out, because we generally follow our dad, we'll send all the content back to one of our colleagues here in Switzerland, who will be posting the content with a delay. My sister generally takes care of all the, all the copyrights, so the texts, the blogs, um, etc. I make sure to get the partners and the sponsors for our different types of adventures and projects and make sure that we respect and we give them what we promised them. Of course, my dad, who in this case you can consider like the artist, he will make sure <laughs> to share the adventure and to be the main actor in all the, the content that we produce. And in terms of the content that you publish, how do you decide what gets published and when? Is it 
like just kind of gut instinct? Do you just have a feeling that today we need to post this? Or based on current events? Or is it a very tight ship with a specific schedule? Um, so I wouldn't say it's a, it's a tight ship. We try to give a bit of an array of different contents. So we'll make sure to share a lot of landscapes and then we will uh, share some inspirational quotes. Then we'll get my dad in front of the camera, you know, just doing some shots for the partners. So we try to mix it all up and make sure that it's kind of kind of flows. Can you tell me a bit more about what it's like to work with sponsors? Sure. Um, so we've been doing it for for a while now. My dad's been sponsored by Mercedes-Benz and Panerai for over 18 years. It's a really close relationship. You need to trust each other and support each other. Working as sponsors has changed a lot these last years with social media. Before, when he started, he just left with a backpack and hopefully he would get an article printed in the newspaper where you would see the logo of the sponsor. Now there's a lot of higher expectations, I would say, and given that social media is a more instant posting, so you can get instant information. Marketing budgets have changed. They're a lot less uh, important as they used to be, given that now we have all the influencers and, and so on. And you can reach a much wider audience with the influencers than with an explorer if you're if he's not an influencer so things have changed you work on on making sure that you give them the visibility that you promised throughout the expedition and in return they can communicate on on what my dad for example does and for the brand and represents them and how about the content that he sends you how does that work because he's often the other side of the world you guys need the authentic content from him, straight from the horse's mouth. But what about if, what about Signal? What about uh, actually sending the content? How does it all work? So it's, it's not always easy because we don't always have a 4G connection or a connection at all. So we work a lot with satellite communication and satellite communication isn't, isn't the cheapest. Um, so he would try and send content daily, but of course that can't be guaranteed while he's on expedition. If he has, for example, he's in a storm, then he can charge his satellite phone to send us the content. So what we try to do is that whenever he can, he will send us content, but us in, in the back office will make sure to, to keep a delay in our posting. So we'll have a three, four day delay between what he's actually lived and what we share on social media to make sure that there's always a constant flow of content that's being published. And there's also the possibility that there might be an accident and, or you know that a crisis comes along and then we have to deal with that and figure out a way of how we're gonna communicate that to his audience. So that's always the risk when, when you're a professional explorer is that there's always the risk of dying at the end, so there could there could be a potential crisis to, to deal with and you just need that extra time to figure it out. Your dad is an adventurer. He's taking risks. He's out there by himself doing it all, living it. So it's not, it's not like managing a celebrity, I guess. It's, yeah, it's, it's very particular, I'd say. Being an adventurer is, is kind of, it's a different kind of world. And for us in communications, communicating the life of an explorer is not like communicating for a politician or an actor or any other kind of celebrity. There's always that, that additional risk and that additional unknown that you must be able to, to manage. And you've got to have really great skills in crisis management to be able to, to deal with um, with an explorer so it's, it's it's interesting you learn a lot but sometimes it's a it's a bit stressful especially when you're the daughter of the explorer just a few questions about your experiences personally running the social media presence of your father the celebrity the explorer 
Um, what works best for you guys on social media? Have you picked up on something which really works? We always make sure to include the, the kind of inspirational message in, in every post or every type of content. Um, you know something that when you're off to work and you're, you're on your Instagram account and all of a sudden you see this this inspirational quote let's say like that no dream is big enough you're going to start your day off well you know you're going to give yourself a little extra during that day and we see a lot of people well we get a lot of responses and engagement to that type of content people really depend on that motiv that motivational or inspirational quote to get through the day so it's it's really cool i think that's why people follow him primarily a particular success story to share? Cool. Um, particular success, um, we've been during the whole COVID and confinement situation, we launched our YouTube channel, which was the first for us. Um, we never really had the time to focus on that. And given that he has so much experience and so much knowledge to share with the world, we thought that it would be appropriate to start getting to do him getting to do videos um, so we started working with different youtubers who they also have an, an audience or much younger audience and doing videos together and sharing experiences with them through through our content and through our channels um, that has boosted our platform well platforms a lot given that they share with their audience that are not necessarily aware of this explorer of my corn who goes around the world and does these crazy things. So that's been working pretty well for us. It's just a way to communicate to a larger audience at the end of the day, but it's been quite successful at the moment. Great. It's amazing that you guys are like trying new things, even at the stage where you're at, where you've got so many followers. The community is huge. Mike is known worldwide now and you guys are still trying new things and it's still, and, and it's working, it's taking off even more strongly for you. Yeah, it's, I mean, we just do, we're just trying to have a bunch of fun at the end of the day and if it works, well then that's fantastic. If it doesn't, then we'll, we'll move on and try something else. It's just all about trying to stay young and even though my father is 54 years old now, um, he's still open to, to new ideas and he knows that my sister and I who have both studied communication in college are, are on top of our game with that and our goal, um, I mean his dream has become our dream as well and we each manage to find our role in that common dream that we have. So whether it is going out to explore and sharing those experiences together, that's that's the main reason why we, we do the, all of this and all these adventures and why we, we've managed to make a business out of social media. How do you know what works really though? Like what do you look at in terms of metrics? Um, what are the numbers? Mm, I, would say, I would say engagement is definitely the, the most important metric for us. We try to be very close to our audience so making sure to reply to their comments and and if they have even negative feedback to be like, well, thank you for your honesty and for your feedback and we'll try and change that. So a lot of comments uh, now views are very important for us. And also the minutes viewed out of our videos on YouTube, for example. So yeah, that's that the main metrics I would say with of course you know reach and so on so thank you very much I'd like to actually wrap this up now with a quick fire round of questions as just takeaways for everybody who's listening today all of the social media marketers who we are hoping to inspire if you're ready what takes up uh, the most of your time that you wish you could change captions your favorite tools for community management Iconosquare. square um, um, Lightroom and Mojo to make those cool um, story designs. So if we're putting a breaking news or kind of a more informative 
um, story, then we'll use Mojo to kind of add some text and make a very cool looking design. Cool. What are your favorite accounts on social media? I really love everything that's travel, photography, um, really into fashion, <laughs> fashion accounts. Uh, I follow a lot of, um, well, sportsmen and athletes pretty much my oh and and food food instagram pages food accounts of course who could not yeah. follow food accounts on social media i guess those are the kinds of accounts where you get your inspiration from is it kind of can you can you pick up your inspiration from anywhere yeah well especially the travel photography accounts and from the sportsmen and athletes to see what they're kind of doing because i guess an explorer is considered a sportsman so yeah of course yeah and the last one is, what is your best piece of advice that you could give to community managers out there? Um, really try to keep, stay organized and have a structure in everything that you post and, and publish. It just makes it easier. For example, for us, we have a, a code, so Motivation Monday. So we'll make sure that it's an inspirational quote. Then Chili Tuesdays is to talk about our Arctic expedition. Then we have uh, a thing for every specific day and it kind of makes, helps us keep a flow and, you know, a mix of all the type of contents that we propose. Definitely. It's so important. You're completely right. Such good advice. Uh, Jessica, a huge thank you to you and to the people there at your office who made all of this possible today. It's been an absolute pleasure getting to know you and chatting to you over the past few weeks. And we're so proud to have done this collaboration with you guys over there at Horn Media. Really, really happy that Icon as well was able to work with you personally and with your team. So thank you again. Well, thank you for listening to my stories and for having me on your podcast.